The Lord be with you. And also with you. You'll uh, notice Jan Snath's name in the bulletin. Jan um, had pneumonia, and pneumonia is is uh, very difficult for her with her breathing problems. Anyway, so she's in the hospital right now, so you'll hear her in our prayers. Today, our theme is welcoming all to worship, and um, that's what the sermon will be on. Well, our gospel lesson is Jesus speaking with the woman at the well. prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It's on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful, <coughs> faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Pass God's peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first lesson is from the book of Acts, starting in chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and re was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading with it was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Asotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Revelations chapter 5. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the woman at the well, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come forward. Good morning. We're going to play a game this morning. (laughs) Good morning, Zane. Here you go. Who, I'm going to show you some pictures and see if you want these people to come to church. Okay? Here's the first picture. Would it be all right for those people to come to church? Why? Oh, they're laughing. They look like nice people. Yeah. Well, it's nice of you to show up, Lincoln. <laughs> and August, good to see you. Yeah, I think we'd invite those people. Hi, Miles. How about these two people? Would we invite these two people to church? Would you invite those two people to church? (laughs) And why not? Because they're yelling at each other. Well, the one is quiet. She could come. This one, you know what? I'd say, why don't you come, but you'd have to go to the cry room. (laughs) Right? Don't you think? Okay. How about this guy? <laughs> he looks too silly, huh? Well, I think even though he has spiked hair, we'd let him come. Okay? Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right, thumbs up. How about this one? Okay. <laughs> Okay, you, uh, yes, I, I see a th- thumbs up or thumbs down? I see a thumbs down. Okay, a thumbs, I don't know. How about this? This is, might surprise you. By the way, this is a picture of someone who has tattoos all over her body. How about that person? It's the same person. She happens to be a pastor. And she's wearing her collar here, so we'd let her come in then, right? How about this guy? (laughs) Guess what? I would invite them all. 
even though they, they might be a little scary at first, okay? Some of them. But I would invite them all. By the way, this is Jay Baker. You, you're too young to remember Tammy Faye and Jim Baker. But this is their son, and he's a, a pastor. Okay. My whole point is, we say, welcome all to worship. Okay? Even if they look like that. Even if they ha have a troubled life and might be yelling a lot. We say, welcome all. Okay? And you know what I'm thankful for? God welcomes me. So he welcomes us all. Yes, August, no puppets today. Oh, there's a heart up there? Okay. Guess what? I think it's time to have a prayer. Everyone bow their heads and repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you welcome all people. Help us to welcome all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you may go back to your seats. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm wondering what I did to my sermon here. Might have to have last week's to or last night's. Let's um Let me begin. Did I say grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Amen. Why do we come to worship? We used to have uh, comment cards in the, in the pews. And we took them out as a request from our um, worship and music people because people kept complaining about worship on them. <laughs> and they thought that it was because they were in the pew that people would complain about worship. I think there's something deeper going on. Let me give you an example. Worship means something to people. And we're talking about welcoming all to worship. And we're going to get to welcoming in a second, but let's talk about worship. We had a member of this congregation and his family were here. He wasn't highly educated, but he had been through a lot in life. He had uh, suffered a terrible industrial accident where he spent a couple of months in uh, the hospital and then months after that recovering. In fact, when it happened, he thought he was dead. Uh, it, it took several hours for them to find him he just thought he was dead. And he would come to me after worship, especially on one of those Sundays when the worship and music people spent more time looking at the words to the hymns than, at the, than at, to the tune. And occasionally, we'd have hymns that just were unknown and sometimes unknowable. And occasionally we'd have a week where we'd have maybe three hymns that just were tough hymns. Great words, but tough hymns. And he would come and he says, Pastor, I need to sing. I need to belt out those 
hymns. Give me something, would you? Please give me something. And I said, oh, I apologize, but we'll work on it. Just be patient. He said, you know, most, most Sundays I can find something, but just give me something. He, he needed worship because he knew how it had helped him survive and help him put his life back together. He needed it. Robert Coles, I'm told this is going to work for me. So far it's not. So I'm going to Now I'll go back to uh, a man by the name of Robert Coles, back in the 60s, spent some time, uh, he was a psychiatrist, and he wanted to find out uh, how adolescents dealt with stress. And at the time, Ruby Bridges was uh, one of those young people who had to be escorted into school because uh, by, um, by federal marshals in order to desegregate a school. Tremendous pressure on Ruby Bridges, just a young girl, six years old at the time. So he wanted to know, how is she dealing with stress? How can she cope? So he went and, and spoke with her, got permission, and he met with her at school, and he asked her all kinds of questions about um, her, her well-being, how well did she sleep at night, how did all her other bodily functions work, how well did they work, how was she eating, and all these questions. And finally, after a couple of weeks, Ruby's mother got up the nerve to call Robert Coles, Dr. Coles, and asked him to come and visit her. So he came, and they sat down at the kitchen table, and he said, uh, she said, uh, Dr. Coles, tell me about these questions you're asking my daughter. And he said, well, we want to know about her well-being. We want to, don't you think it's important for us to learn how young children cope with stress, especially in this terribly stressful situation? And she said, oh, yes, I agree with your work. I'm, I'm for it. But it's the questions. And Robert Cole says, the questions? And she said, yes, the questions. She said, never once did you ask her about God. And all of a sudden, a light bulb goes off in the psychiatrist's mind. So the next time he met with Ruby, he asked her about God and about her faith. And he went to church with her and he said, the Christian gospel and a community of believers surrounding her gave her the strength to cope and to do so admirably. And he said, from his standpoint, with very little stress in her life, there's something about worship that's extremely important to people. So why do people complain about worship? Well, it's so important to me Please, give me something. Help me. It's how I sort my life out. It's how I deal with the stress in my life. It's how I'm given the strength and courage to go on and do things and serve. Tony Campalo tells the story of a young woman her uh, name was Nancy. She had a handicap camping uh, uh, situation where she 
was paralyzed from the waist down. But she filled her days with talking to people on the phone. She put in an ad in the newspaper that says, uh, if you're lonely, if you're out of sorts, if you need help, call and we'll talk through your problems. And Tony Campalo asked her, well, how did you become paralyzed? And she said, well, one night I was in my apartment and I decided my life was not going the way I wanted to and I was going to end my life. Fourth floor apartment. So I jumped out the window. Unfortunately, I didn't die. I only became paralyzed. She said, while I was in the hospital, I lay there thinking what a fool I had been. And one night, someone said, Nancy, would you like to go to chapel? And she said, I didn't particularly want to go to chapel, but I said, why not? Don't have anything else to do. So they took her on the gurney and brought her into chapel. She said people were nice to me and welcomed me. And we sang. She said somewhere in the service during one of the hymns, she said, I do not know what hymn it was. All I know is that Jesus spoke to me and Jesus said to me, Nancy, up until this point in life, you have had a healthy body, but a crippled soul. From today onward, you are going to have a healthy soul, but a crippled body. She said, from that moment on, I became a follower of Jesus. And she said, I put the ad in the paper because I knew if I was going to keep my soul he healthy, I had to be busy, and I had to be busy helping people. Worship is supposed to do something to us. The interesting thing about the early church, you think we have issues today accepting people dealing with issues in the newspaper and everything else, accepting people. Well, the early church had an extremely difficult time. If you look at that text from Acts, Philip was a Hellenistic Jew. The reason he even became prominent was that the, uh, the church was in Jerusalem. They were living communally. And when they were giving out food, the Hellenistic Jews, they're the Greek-speaking Jews, they're the ones that didn't live in Jerusalem, they're the ones that were enculturated into Roman culture. And they were complaining that their widows were not getting as much food as the Hebrew widows were. So the apostles go, oh, we can't mess around with this. Let's elect seven deacons seven servers, and they can wait on tables. Stephen was one. He was a Hellenist. Philip was one. He was a Hellenist. See how the early church, they had a hard time accepting other Jews, let alone uh, some of the other people that they were required to accept, Gentiles. Philip goes off, we know what happened to Stephen, he was martyred. Philip goes off, an angel of the Lord sends him to the Gaza Strip, encounters an Ethiopian eunuch. Now, what's odd about a eunuch? Uh, eunuchs were uh, probably given by their parents, their young boys given to their, by their parents to the king or queen because they'd have a very good life, but they had to have uh, surgery done to, of course, their genitalia. And they did it at a young age so the hormones wouldn't start affecting uh, their bodies. And they became extremely loyal people. Ethiopian eunuch, uh, Gentile, probably black, and not accepted by Jews, 
not because he was black, but because of his surgery. In Deuteronomy 23, and I'm going to read this in the King James Version because it uses more poetic language. He whose jewels are crushed or whose privy member is cut off shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. So he truly was not accepted by the Jewish people. Peter proclaims to him Jesus and he says, what is to prevent me from being baptized? Peter saw nothing and baptized him. Jesus certainly accepted people who nobody else seemed to accept. This woman at the well, five husbands, and the one she was with now was not her husband. Jesus proclaimed to her that the water he gives, if she drinks it, she'll never go thirsty. She invited Jesus back to her village to evangelize the whole town. Jesus accepted. The early church went through a lot of acceptance. Uh, we'll see more and more of that as time goes on. Why accept and welcome people? Because worship means an awful lot to us. Gives us strength and changes us. We should want others. We should be burning with a desire for others to come to worship. Feel that same love and acceptance. Have their lives changed and transformed. A few years ago, I shared with you a little video that I found on the website of Grace Lutheran Church. Uh, I couldn't get the video to play on our machine back there, so I'm going to tell you what was on it. And it begins with a woman saying, here are some of the reasons, some of the excuses people give for not coming to church. And the first one is, I can't go to church until I get my life together. And then they have a, a, a woman um, who uh, possibly had an alternative lifestyle, and she says, church is how I got my life together. And then a little tagline, a place for new beginnings. Why people don't come to church? Church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And then they had a pipe fitter, a plumber, say, and there's always room for one more. Tagline, imperfect people welcome. Another one, all they care about is money. And they zoom in on a man who says, they care about me, not my money. Tagline, people are precious. question is there's some kind of dress code and they zoom on a young woman wearing a t-shirt and she said yes the code is wear some clothes <laughs> tagline come as you are another one church makes me nervous zoom in on a young woman I was nervous at first and then I felt right at home tagline right where God wants you to be Then the next one, I'm not sure that I believe everything that you believe. Zoom in on a young man, but you can still belong. Tagline, doubts welcomed. Another one, church is for wimpy, girly men. And then they have Thomas, who is a big black man st standing next to Scotty, and it says, uh, do you want to say that again? And then they zoom in on Thomas and Scotty flexing their muscles. Then the words, a young woman, if you knew what I have done, you wouldn't want me. And they zoom in on a man who's an airplane pilot. 
And he says, if you knew what I have done, you wouldn't be worried. Tagline, forgiven. Then they go on to say, you can come to my church if you're Catholic, Baptist, Jewish, Lutheran, Mormon, Presbyterian, a whole lot of everything and a whole lot of nothing. Come to my church where no one is perfect, right? No one is perfect, where beginners are welcome, where socks are optional, but grace is required. Forgiveness is offered where hope is alive and where it is okay not to be okay. Really. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in
defeated sin. We offer prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Light of the world, we pray for the, the church throughout the world. Raise up bold witnesses like Philip, who will testify to the rich and power, to the rich and powerful about God's good news, which is perfected in love, so that peace may abound in our time. Let us pray. We are thankful for the world that you have created and given to us to care for and to enjoy. Guide us to serve as good stewards of the earth. Let us pray. God of mercy, give strength to judges, lawyers, and for the leaders of government who seek justice in this world. We remember the hot spots in this world, the, th the thousands in Nepal, India, and Afghanistan struggling to deal with the devastating aftermath of the massive earthquake. In our own country, we pray for relief from racial tensions, especially in Baltimore. And we give thanks for the eradication of rubella from North and South America. May all in this world be treated with fairness and equity. Let us pray. God of healing, we pray for those who are poor, hungry, distressed, and sick. Send your healing presence to the sick, especially to Gary Coffey, Mary Lou Cordero, Cliff Dykeman, Dennis Edwards, Sally Hollinsad, Dustin Jones, Scotty Inman, Jim Lampy, Ellen Lassant, Alan Malcolm, Verdine Miller, Jeff Morris, Darren Murphy, Ruth Pipcorn, Jan Snath, and Wayne Sproul. Are there any others? Resurrection God. Assure all who mourn of that love, especially the family and friends of Richard La Follette. Let us pray. We give you thanks, God of love, for all those who help make worship happen for us. The shepherds, the altar and flower committees, all of our music people. We thank you that worship brings healing to our souls. Help us to welcome all so that they can experience your healing grace too. Let us pray. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are supposed to have a, um, a temple talk about worship. And David, is that you? <laughs> well, David, I'm glad you're here. asked me this morning if I had written anything down, and I said, no, why would I do that? I mean, why would I be prepared for this? I kind of wing it as things go along. I used to be the welcoming minister, and uh, it was kind of an adventure. Uh, but D David, he, you're ignoring the Bible verse, listen to your wife and do what she says. I didn't realize that was a Bible verse. Okay. But it was kind of interesting watching people come in the door, and some people would stand there and go like this. And of course, I'm the kind of guy that likes to accost people, see, and I want to tell them that, all right, I'm the welcoming minister, I'm here to accost you. And they would look at me and say, what in the world have I gotten myself into? But it was interesting to watch people as they would 
come into the service and they would, some folks would sit next to them and tell them how the thing went together and all that sort of stuff. Some people would greet them afterwards and ask them to come sing in the choir or come do this or come do that. But one person sticks in my mind and that's a woman I have never seen since. And it bothers me almost every day. Because she would come in, young woman, stood about this tall. She came in just kind of tentatively, and me being the kind of guy that just says, rawr, 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 she kind of backed away from me. Now here's this old guy and this young woman. And I said, come in, come in, sit down. Ed, it was probably four or five weeks until she came back. She didn't sit next to anybody. She just wanted to be left alone. And the reason she sticks in my mind is she did come back once. I did the same thing. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Da, 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 da. And it bothers me. She lives in the neighborhood. I don't know where she lives, any of that sort of stuff. But she hasn't come back. And I wonder, why? Was it me? What did I do? But maybe welcoming all to worship is just that. Welcoming those who are nervous to even be here and want to be, just leave me alone a little bit. And that's okay, too. Okay? I love the hymns. I love the everything, exuberance that, that comes with all of us here today. But that woman bothers me. I hope she comes back. I know she felt welcome. But she was scared, just like me, every day. Thanks. Welcome. Did I say too much? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin. Who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord, <coughs> excuse me, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Life-giving God, nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus, our risen Savior. As you send us in you, people, and by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and in our actions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad we love children? I, I love the noise. A um, couple of things right after this is a uh, new member class. Those of you that are part of that, uh, it's in the library. Also, uh, one of the things that we're doing, uh, going through our mission statement is all part of our um, Upon This Rock capital funds campaign and it also is to give you an opportunity to sign up for things that um, uh, either need to be done or ways that you can uh, be involved in the church of course music programs today is a, a very big part of that so um, there's supposed to be sign up sheets in the back you can um, take and uh, take advantage of that uh, the other thing and I, I haven't told the president of the congregation this yet, but Mick and I are going to take a quick trip to Minnesota. We're leaving this afternoon, and we're going to be back Friday afternoon, or Friday evening. So if you thought you'd miss me next Sunday, not a chance. <laughs> but um, Mick's mother, Mick's sister is going out of town, and she didn't want to leave mom without anybody to be crabbing at, <laughs> namely me. So I'm going to go up there and, and be that person. So we're, we're mama sitting. Therefore, any class that I would teach this week, I'm not going to be there. You can do whatever you want, but I won't be there. Any other announcements? Please receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, and the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship. Care to all in need. Go in peace. Share the news. Alleluia.